After the promotional photo shoot, it was followed by interviews and clips of each of the two endorsers. But when asked which of her happiest memories she would like to go back to if she had the chance, Kun is the one who makes a confession to Nan in words. After that it's time to switch to Pooh's side for the interviews. The content of Pooh's interview could not help but impress the crowd due to its straightforwardness and authenticity. It also made Nan, who was not far away, smile even more. This shoot was done in one shot. In this way, the boss was quite pleased with his work team, even after the incident and praised Nan emphatically. He spoke of Nan's past shortcomings though. Don't know what Nan has encountered but think he is getting better now. It's obviously related to Pooh though. When he finished answering his boss, he turned his attention directly to Pooh. This action was also watched by Kun who was not far away, and he took the initiative to invite Nan and said he wanted to go out to dinner with her in the evening. Before Nan could respond, however, she was first caught by the cover of the cell phone Kun remembered. The caller is none other than Kun's mother. But when Nan saw the picture of Kun's mother, he couldn't help but think of the picture who had shown him of the mother and son together. It also made him realize, to his dismay, that the two looked somewhat alike. Nan Han had long to think about it. Well, when Pu came over to talk to him, it was also at this point that Pai came towards the two saying that the big boss becomes happy with the outcome of the shoot. It's kind of a small celebration, so the boss wants to take everyone to dinner tonight. After a brief introductory speech, the boss let everyone free to move around, sing and dance, but the way Nan and Pu are cuddling is also very upsetting for Kun to see. Afterwards, Claire, who enjoys divination, once again takes up her hobby. She gets Nan and Pu and Kun together to try to divine for everyone. Unfortunately, it was rejected in unison. Don't look for Nan to threaten Claire with a job that forbids divination. But as soon as he hears Claire compliment Pu on his good looks, he can't wait to get his hands on Pu. But the scene gets under Kun's skin and he simply gets in front of Pu to get at Nan. With his arm around Nan's shoulders, he invited Nan aside to speak alone. His attitude also made it clear that he just wanted to confess first. Although Nan is not sure, everyone knows it by heart and Kun only secretly comfort Pu a few times, and Nan had just walked into a corner with Kun. When Kun started to make a move on Nan, and Nan didn't even realize it, thankfully, at this point in time, Bai, who was in the pro Pu camp, joined in without saying a word. He makes an effort to try and break the rhythm of Kun's confession, and not too far away, Ku ran closer to the two to eavesdrop. Pai was rebutting Kun's words when he heard Kun saying that even Nan is close to anyone, but he never opens up to anyone, leaving Pai choked up and not knowing what to say. Kun also says that he wants to talk to Nan alone. Pai doesn't want to leave, but he can't help it if Nan asks him to. So Pai, who is thoroughly disliked, has to come to Pu. Then with a wave of his hands, he stated that he had done his best and that his purpose had not been accomplished. He also told Pu that if he wasn't ready to do something, it would only be a matter of time before Kun ate Nan, a kid who is not easy. This began to shake Pu's heart, and Nan seemed to echo Pai's statement, and Kun's side asks Nan if he has opened up to anyone. He also knows that the person Nan has been looking for is Pu, but after he meets Pu, their relationship doesn't go anywhere. Does that mean that there might be a chance that he might be able to pursue Nan and have some other identity? However, Kun was waiting for an answer. The bar owner was also on stage and asked everyone if there was anyone who wanted to sing on stage. Then after seeing Pu, he immediately came over and warmly invited him, who also got the courage to go on stage and sing, because he was stimulated and drank to give himself courage. Before Pu could start singing, an undead pie came over again to stir the pot, that gave Nan some more time to hesitate. Before Pooh started singing, he said it was a song he wrote and specified that Nan said, This song is meant for his closest friends. Pai also takes the opportunity to lie that his boss has something for Nan to get him back, while allowing Nan to avoid answering. Then Pai went over. Nan didn't walk up to the boss or Pooh. Instead, not far away, he just watched Pooh on stage singing love songs to himself to listen. He sang his heart out and it touched Nan's heart. Its mind had also been recalling the past when the two were together. When Pooh finished the song, he said many more things that touched Nan's heart. For example, his cowardice cost him the love of his life. It was also timidity that kept the song in the shadows for 10 years. But now he finally dared to sing and dared to show his feelings. He also said that no matter what happens, he'll be with the other guy. So he ignored the stares of everyone on stage. He steps off the stage mirror and strides straight forward to Nan. He confesses deeply to Nan saying his declaration of love, at the point where Nan asks him if he's really not scared anymore. Who kisses Nan in full view of the crowd and shows him his determination. And after that kiss, Nan kissed Pooh again, responding to Pooh's own feelings with an action. So with the crowd applauding, the two officially came together and embraced. As for Kun, he was also there to witness the two. After this two-way runaway love, he joins Pai in the Lost Love Club and synchronizes to drown his sorrows in alcohol. After waiting for so many years, who is finally looking forward to being with Nan. 
What follows is the news of Grandma Pu's sudden death after a long illness, the pain of losing a close family member, Apu in tears for a while over this. Although Nan is Pu's boyfriend, he can't always be there to take care of Pu. He had to return to his job soon after attending his grandmother's funeral. For this reason, Nan had to put off many invitations to events from her close friends. He uses his vacation days to commute between the two places to be with Pu. Otherwise, he was really afraid that Pu would starve to death because he kept himself locked up in his room and didn't eat either. He is constantly concerned about Pu's emotional state. And Nan, who only has Pu in her heart and eyes like this, makes Pai look at her and lose her mind. And while Pu is in the middle of a moody slump, on Nan's side, she is highly appreciated by her boss for her work skills. He's going to assign Nan to work with him in China to help with market development. This should have been a promotion and something to celebrate. But Nan wasn't happy about it at the moment because it means that he will not be able to meet Pu for two years. He doesn't want to leave Pu alone. That's why even when everyone was celebrating this event for him, Nan just looked distracted and Pai on hearing Nan's decisions and concerns. Instead, he says he doesn't want Nan to give up a great job opportunity for love. He says that sooner or later, Pu is going to get himself together. If the people love each other, surely there can be a solution to these problems. It wasn't easy for him to fight his way to where he is now. Pu though wallowed in that pain for a long time and cried when she thought of her grandmother. Luckily Nan shows up in time to listen to Pu as he talks about his sadness. Only then did he follow Nan back to the pair's home in the city. During Pu's night and Nan's cohabitation accident, Nan just for seeing the picture of his mother that he kept so carefully, he asks Pu if he has any desire to go abroad to find his birth mother. Pu politely declined after hearing what Nan said. Nan says that his mother has another family now and he has a younger brother. And he hadn't met this brother? How strange it would be to think that two people who hadn't seen each other in years would now suddenly appear. There would be happiness, but it would still be overwhelmed, and that would be better than not seeing it. Nan then takes the photo on the pretext of helping Pooh put it in a frame. The next day, Pooh drops Nan off at the office and Claire witnesses, the two blatantly interacting sweetly. She TSKED in the corner when he sees Nan getting a phone call and leaving. He goes up to Pooh, who is in the heat of the moment, and flirts with her. However, Claire, in a moment of tongue in cheek, Talks about Nan's impending move away to work in a foreign country. This left Pu, who was kept in the dark and uninformed, in a state of dismay. And Claire, after realizing she'd misplaced Nan, made a quick excuse to leave in a panic. Upon entering the office, Nan meets Kun again. Kun sees Nan as enthusiastic as ever and goes up to say hello. He ambiguously expressed his feelings for him, after which he still stated something he still wanted to say. But Nan immediately has to leave temporarily because Claire calls him to work. Interrupting the conversation leaves Kun with yet another defeat. And as Nan prepares to go on a business trip with Claire, he looked at the mother and son picture of Pu in the car. And then at Kun, who was walking out of the company building, it brought the doubts within him to the surface once again. That night, Pu prepares a large table in his yard, especially for Nan. He also excused himself by saying that the consolation was that he was too busy at work. Pu heard from Nan when the product he endorsed was selling well. Pu had thought of having a nice talk with Nan about him going to work abroad. Not coincidentally just as Pooh was about to talk to him about it, a drunken Kun then seeks out the two men's home in a daze. As soon as he entered, he pushed away Pooh who tried to stop him. He was just pathetic to Nan. He confessed to him again and asked why he didn't choose his year old self. Nan also ignored him in favor of a Pooh who couldn't see what was going on. Where could Pooh stand to hear that? He went straight up to Kun and tried to teach him a lesson, but Nan stopped him. Nan had wanted Kun to go back first, but since Kun is the later, he can only reluctantly plead with him to give him a chance. He asks Nan for a promise. If Pu makes him sad or abandons him later, he would stand by his side if he gave the word and would never leave him alone. Kun's words made Pu want to punch him even more without saying anything. But with Nan stopping him, he had no choice but to hold back. That's not all. He has to be tolerant enough to accept a drunken Kun to spend the night in his house. Pu, of course, is upset that Nan is being so nice to anyone. Nan also senses that Pu is jealous and has to come forward to hunt each other to calm down. However, just as the two are about to kiss up, they are stopped by Kun who suddenly wakes up, who tries to go to sleep without knowing what to say, and Nan sees this and moves in to coax him. However, just when the two were trying to be gracious and sweet, they are spoiled by Kun who bursts under the covers. It was about to blow Pu's mind, so she had to run to the couch to sleep. This also made Nan rush to appease and coax her boyfriend's little tantrum. He first ran to the couch to tease Pu as well and favoring Kun spoiled it, which just leaves you speechless. The next morning, Pu somehow sleeps until she cuddles with Kun. It cost both of them to even yell in terror as soon as they opened their eyes. Nan, who was brushing her teeth in the bathroom at the moment, was smiling miserably as she watched the show. It's hard not to suspect that Nan isn't on it, as there was no work schedule for the day. 
when told that Nan would be home office today, who then starts cooking and eating with Nan sweetly, and Kun not only cheekily wears Nan's clothes, but asks him to stay with them as well. Regardless, from this meal onward, the two men's shura was once again officially open. Ku and Kun are also under the same roof and engage in all sorts of rivalries. Nan did notice, however, that the two had a habit of being too consistent with their meals. It also struck Kun as similar to his own mom's flavor. He thought the two could settle down a little, but it turned out to be just what he thought. The twos made such a commotion that Nan couldn't concentrate on her work. All he could do was vocalize to stop the childish behavior of the two and in the process tell them to stay away from him. It was only briefly quiet. That's when Kun got a call from work. When he borrows a pen and paper from Nan, he then accidentally rummages through and sees a picture of Pu in Nan's bag. He then asks Nan why there was a picture of his mother. Because of this, Pu then realizes that Kun is his half-brother. The two also recognized each other by this accident. Kun also realizes that Pu never went abroad to find his mom. That's because of the fear of disturbing him. Seeing this Kun also tells Pu that in fact, his mother has always been concerned about him too. Even his own name was meant to match his. That future brother and sister-in-law naturally can't be robbed. Kun also announces in the midst of this that he has given up his pursuit of Nan, choosing to fulfill the duel. After the brothers get the word out, Kun shows his friendliness to Pu once again. He states that he really thinks of him as family, telling Pu that he's not alone anymore. The image of the two brothers, recognizing each other and standing together, touched Nan's heart. Kun says a proper goodbye to both Pu before leaving. He also had a warm hunt with Pu and promised to visit Pu again later. After leaving, Nan also talks about how she feels about the two brothers. Although Pu is inevitably a little jealous, but in his heart, he was happy to pull Nan back into the room. But Pu spoils the mood by asking Nan when she's leaving for her job abroad. The comment hurt Nan inside, though he was also curious how Pu knew about it. But when Pu doesn't answer, he still says that he doesn't plan to go abroad, seeing that Pu refuses to answer herself positively. Nan gets upset and starts a cold war with Pu. He announced that he would be heading overseas to work like Pu said he would. In the days following this, Nan's attitude of ignoring him made Pu feel aggrieved and uncomfortable. Finally, after once being unable to take Nan's cold face, Pu stops Nan at home. He told him what was really in his heart and made a pact with him. He would wait for Nan to finish her work and come back to join him, and he was willing to stay in this place for the duration, waiting for him to return. So with that Pu and Nan agreed to pack up and leave Pu's side. He follows his boss overseas to expand his business, and Pu guards his loneliness and solitude. Apart from his work, he spent his days immersed in messages with Nan, eagerly awaiting the day of his return. Yet life also made him miss each other more and more, because of Nan's presence everywhere. On Kun's side, he heard the call for help on the road right after he got out of the car and couldn't help but see what he could do. Although he unfortunately got a few scrapes in the process, he thankfully managed to save the bullied teenager in the end. And when he hears that the other person's name is also Nan, Kun's whole body freezes. After surviving countless lonely days, on this day Pu would have been a little apprehensive at home, anxiously awaiting Nan's return. How could he have accidentally broken the cup and even dropped the pen? Who knew that originally Pu was feeling a little unlucky, and his heart was in a bit of a panic. Offhand, Claire comes to the door and informs Pu that Nan is there because she wants to surprise Pu. So he took care of his work back early, so he changed his flight. However, the flight he took back to his home country has now crashed and his whereabouts are now unknown. That one sentence immediately sends Pu, incredibly, into despair. Although Claire said she would contact someone at the airport about the situation, but Pu's heart was still worried sick. When Claire leaves, Pu is unable to contact Nan because she hasn't been able to, and he is having a hard time not getting the latest information about the crashed plane. After he hands up the phone with Claire, the cat that favors Nan's keeper knocks their picture frame to the ground. A heartbroken Pu recalls the day that he made a promise. Then he hugged the picture frame of the two of them and cried bitterly. He didn't know what to do with his future without Nan. Just then, however, Nan appeared at his side and hugged and comforted him. Listening to Nan's apology, who is still in a bit of disbelief, who gradually calms down as Nan comforts him. Nan also tells Pooh about all this. Turns out he was planning to surprise Pooh, and Nan's boss rewarded Nan when he returned home. He upgraded his position and switched to an earlier single, and he didn't want to leave Pooh's side again. This time he came back. The two can't hold back their thoughts of each other after a long absence. And Pooh immediately opened his gift and Nan went straight to bed to start making love. The whole play is finished, although Nan and Pooh don't get together until the end and not for long before so much happens. But for them, just being with each other is the best and happiest thing. It's good to have you with me for the rest of my life. Well, that's it for this installment. Please support and leave your comments, guys, and we'll see you in the next installment.